Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel Made with Love. Now I made these two junk journal covers, just having fun trying to figure out how this all works and how to kind of do the covers and now I'm going to figure out the signatures and then I realized that I didn't really do any proper measurements on these. I just got some cardboard and I just started crafting and making little binders. This is about a size that I like for a little um, journal and stuff. I like a little bit larger stuff. Uh, this one here feels more like a real binder. So I was trying to figure out by folding up paper. So I got some folded paper here. Excuse it. I've had to fold these so many different times trying to figure uh, these out trying to figure out what size I need because I didn't do any measurements uh, I guess I kind of forgot that when you take a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper you fold it in half now you've got six inches wide when I put the six inches into here um, just uh, let's see if I can show it's like Sorry, it's just a little crooked. I'm just having trouble holding it. But you can see how much in the paper is. It doesn't come out to here. It's a good like inch too short. And then this one here being even longer when you fold your regular paper and you put it here, you can see like just it's like two inches too short. So I wasn't really thinking about uh, the sizing of my paper and how big of a paper. I'd need to put in my little journals. Like if I do this, you can see how much bigger the black one really is to the purple one. And I wasn't even thinking of that. I was just like, oh, let's just quickly figure out a fast way to try crafting these, making these junk journals, and now let's go and fold the paper and sew up my signatures and everything. And I'm here and I've been folding up paper and trying to figure out what size of paper I need to fit these. And that's when I came to the conclusion, I'm gonna just have to set both of these aside for right now and make a smaller journal cover because uh, there is no way I could get the paper I need to size. I mean, I do have papers this size, but the standard paper are like eight by 11 or my uh, scrapbooking, which is 12 by 12. When you fold them in half, they're going to be too small for both of these binders. But I mean, see, I mean that I'm even calling them binders because that's what they look like and feel like. So this is what I figured out. The size for the purple one is this size of a square which is about nine by seven and a half. So if you take a piece of paper and fold it in half to get to that seven, almost eight inch mark, I need a piece of paper that's like, you know, 16 inches. And then same with the other one, like to get the black one, for this to be at the nine inch mark almost, I think it's like eight and a half, nine inch mark, I need a piece of paper that's like almost 20 inches. So I've decided to just set those aside for just a moment while I figure out the how to make the signatures that will fit those. And I guess I'm going to remake myself a smaller one. So now that I've got some, you know, uh, experience making the covers, now I'm just going to go and actually just make my signatures and then I'll make the cover because I was trying to do the cover and the signature and new to this type of crafting. I mean, I've done paper crafts for a long time. I've done scrapbooking for years. I've done all this other type of stuff, but it's the idea of putting the couple of different things together in one project when you haven't really done much of certain air products. I can't speak. When you haven't done much of certain types of products and your arts and craft stuff and you're trying to put them together to create a project without actually measuring anything. So I'm going to start by, you know, got my papers set up, except I just dropped all my paper fell off when I put those down. But I've got some really pretty scrapbook paper. I've got stacks and stacks of scrapbook paper. So I've been just folding them up. And so I had this one, I really liked this one. And I have lots of these really pretty ones that I don't know which way you would 
I would use it in scrapbooking. Like there's a lot of these different pages like this where normally I would cut this into two sections. So I keep this one here with the roses and the words. And then I've got the um, lined practice page is what it looks like. So I folded this to look like this so I can keep the flowers and the writing. And then I fold it in the way so all my lines go like this. So when I'm doing the journaling, I actually have proper lines to write on or at least to look like I would be doing that. And then by folding this bottom part up, I get the nice roses and the words, which are actually, it's in French. Uh, I think it's something of a poem. So I'm just gonna actually type that into Google uh, Translate and see what it actually says. But I kind of created these little double pockets here. And then I have this other one here, which I love these type of papers where you get like four patterns. So obviously it's gonna be too tall to fit in any type of a journal but I fold it in half like this. And then I get like, you know, this side, you know, two, two different patterns on this side and then two different patterns on this side. Now with this one here, with these type like this, these are the ones that I use for um, making other type of books that I've made. I don't know what they're called. They're kind of like journals, but if you take your piece of paper and you fold it and you cut on certain lines and you roll it around and you get a little book. And these are the ones I like to use for doing that because then every page has its own color. But even like this, like um, I folded it here and then I cut it. I actually get like, you know, the four different pages, you know, four different pages that way, like, like uh, making card making same thing. You know, you kind of get this card where you get like every page of the card is a different pattern. So I like these types, but for this one, I'm going to fold it in half and I'll trim a little at the top and a little at the bottom just so you're kept with enough of the stuff and then just folding all these different pieces of paper but what I have seen is a lot of people make junk journals using old books and I've got two really old little books here I got this one here and the book is actually you know it's starting to fall because it just fell apart it was starting to fall apart I got these at a secondhand shop and I'd seen this one and then I had seen this one and I was there and when I opened this one there was nothing in it and the lady working there was going to throw it in the garbage and said, oh don't I can do something with this I didn't know what I was going to make out of this so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to make a new uh, junk journal but this is the one I'm going to use so I'm going to have to cut very carefully clean up all this stuff here um, get some cardboard and make a new spine. So this one will actually be made out of three pieces of cardboard, not like one solid piece. But I said, now that I've made a couple, I kind of got some ideas of how to piece this stuff together. So this would be my, thing. and I think with this size, and I said like, you know, a scrapbook paper, holding it in quarters, this will work perfect. So this would be an easier size for me to work with. Even this, this is a piece of extra paper from, you know, like it's almost right. If I fold it in half, it's going to be a little, it's a little short, but I think, you know, little few pieces like this, or I can even attach this to like, you know, I've seen so many different things of people doing things with little scrap pieces, you know, that there's so many ideas that I've been thinking about now that I've started doing the junk journaling process. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a new junk journal cover and signatures that will fit this. And this book here, if I just put it down, it's, um, read my lines here, five and a half inches by six six and a half so it's five and a half inches wide and six and a half inches tall so I know this can be so much easier to make little signatures for this so this is what I'm going to do Just move my camera down so you can see first thing I'm going to do is take my exacto knife here and I'm gonna cut I mean I could use scissors because of the way it's already all ripped I'm just going to 
oops, score this a couple times. Now the thing is, is it's got the pretty picture inside and I don't want to lose any of this picture. This was the Shoemaker and the Elves or whatever, Elves and the Shoemaker or whatever it was called. This is just not working because it's just, let me see my scissors. Okay, I guess I'll just keep doing, using this. I had scissors. Oh, I've got scissors right beside me. So now I'm just going to trim this. But I'm going to be on this side so I can see because I don't want to lose any of that, as much of that picture. Look at that. And then this back, I don't care if it stays like this. Or if I cover it, I haven't decided, but it's the inside covers I want to keep with that. The outside, I like this picture, so I don't really want to do too much to this outside. I like that. Because I was watching people make these out of those little golden books. And I say, you know, for me, cutting a book up, I mean, even this one, to do something with this would be really cute. I like the pictures in here, but I don't want to wreck a book. I'm one of those people who are like, I save books, I rescue books, I'm going to repair this book. I don't want to cut it all up. But it hits a point where you have to say, well, the book is just so old, it's falling apart. I mean, the staples are rusted. So I don't want to wreck the storybook but I want to add to it and you know preserve it so that's what I'm going to do so I got these and I just gotta hit these so I got them going the right way so the front cover and the back cover and I like the fact that um, the front cover was yellow so the inside is yellow and this one was the red so the inside is red so that will also help me remember which is which also you put the pictures like this you've got them going the right way if your elves are upside down you've got the cover going the wrong way so now i'm going to i just need some cardboard so i want to make a good i think i'm just going to measure this i think it was about an inch or an inch and a half a little over an inch maybe an inch and a quarter wide so I think that's a pretty good thing. So I'm going to probably make it a good inch. So I just got to go and grab my cardboard. So like I said, all my paper fell that way. So I'll be back in just one moment. Okay, so this is a piece of packaging from the stuff my husband got me for Christmas. And I said I was keeping all the packaging because I, I liked it. The colors of the boxes and everything. This was just a piece of the inside. I think this is what the bathrobe was you know, held in place with. I'm just going to try to get a chunk of this. Let's see. Okay. There. And this cardboard is actually about the same thickness as this is already. So I don't have to build it up because I've seen people, if you've got like a thicker cover and you're using thinner cardboard, you got to build it up. But this is almost the right thickness. Now I've got this is like two inches or no, well, three inches. Yeah, I can't even, can't even read the numbers on here. So three inches. So I want to make it closer to an inch. So I'm just going to move this aside for one second. Actually, um, Will this work? Maybe I'll do this. Okay. I'll use my glass cutting board. Now I've got to get this so I've got the inches to me. I know it's on centimeters and I go back and forth between the two centimeters and inches and I sometimes I get it mixed up because I use them all the time and I'll say the wrong thing and in my house, we thermostats are set at both Fahrenheit and Celsius, and I always get them mixed up. So I'll say them as if it's the same thing. So I'm just going to grab my Sharpie pen here. I'm just going to draw myself a line. So I've got a. So I know kind of where the one inch would be. Line. That so I can kind of keep myself a little more straight when I'm using my X-Acto knife. 
but I'm still going to use this cutting mat here as a ruler just so I keep myself even a little more straighter if I can running it towards myself and then you know it actually cuts right through all in one good swoop and then you can end up cutting your stomach now I don't even know how tall I needed this I just want to make sure I had a good amount of it okay. I'm just gonna trim it off here it's gonna be a little long for now but that's okay I just want a good amount there I'm gonna put this back under here it's easier for me to see the this because this one is reflecting the light back and it's just harder for me to see so now I'm going to put the white to the back and do this to here like I said I don't want to lose the picture of the elves I'm just wondering if this is too thick I can't even see I want to try to keep as much of the picture of the elves as possible. Let's see. That'll be okay. I'll lose a little bit unless I make it a little thicker. Let's see. This would be two inches. Let me see. I'm just curious if I do this instead. If I cut off that one inch, and if I do this, let's see. Is that not going to fit? I don't see. That's not going to work. Okay, so my tape is two inches. I don't really want to lose that much of the picture, but I think I'll have to lose a little bit of the pictures, but that's okay. I want to keep the elves. I'll do that. <coughs> sometimes it tears easily, sometimes it doesn't. Oops. Now, what I'm going to do is just because I want to line this up and I want to save as much of the picture as possible, and I want this to be as smooth as possible, I'm putting the duct tape on this cardboard and then I'm going to it didn't work Got this lined up. Oops, now I'm gonna end up pulling that off. Okay, I will leave it like that. I went a little crooked. But I have enough of the picture inside. That's what I wanted to protect because I wanted to save as much of that inside picture as possible. Okay, now I can just take an exacto knife and trim all this excess stuff off. Now I've got my cover. Now I'm just going to do the same here, but I don't want to lose too much of this picture. I'm going to end up losing some of this. Let's see. 
And I'm gonna end up losing a bit of that. That's okay. As long as I said mostly, I just really like this picture. I don't mind this side. I think I'm gonna cover this with something else, anyways. But it is is this part here that I really wanna keep as much of this as possible. I'm going to wrap this around the inside as well. Like I've done to the other one. I like that it really reinforces it. Again, I just got to be careful how I pull on this tape because I just don't want to wreck it. Let's see if I is it sometimes. This tape tears easily and sometimes it just doesn't. It just depends on the angle. Okay, I'm gonna get this as straight as possible. There. A little crooked up here at the top, but that's okay. I but it's pretty straight now. And I said this duct tape I found really reinforced it well. I'm just going to press it here and press it in here. There. See, I've got my cover made. Like I said, I do like this picture. I do want to do something because it's a little, like it's got some extra words here. This I'll probably just totally cover, but it's the inside. I don't want to lose any of this inside here. Now because I'm using this pink tape, I might frame it with some more tape around here. I'm not sure. And I'm going to make, let's see, just got to see what the height of this is. I know I've measured it, but now I've got my little sewing tape measure here. It's so much easier to use this sometimes. So six and a half. Uh, let's see. Middle is three and a quarter. So I'm just going to find my sharpie here. I'm going to mark the three and a quarter. And then so half of that. I don't know. This is where I, my math is. Sometimes I can do it, sometimes I can't, but these are great because all I do is just. What I do when I'm sewing things, I need to do a half of an odd thing is you can just squeeze this and pinch it and then you kind of get there. So from there it's one and I don't know what that number would be. There's one and a half and then I don't know what that number would be. It's the I always mess up trying to do measurements. I'm not a sore. I'm not much of a person who does this. I do centimeters. So it would be like, I think it's four centimeters is what I would have, which is just one and a quarter, but then you're up the one little notch past the one quarter. I don't know what that is. I know my lines, my dots are in there, but they're not quite centered. So now I'll do my centering them properly. So to center it, I need it to move over to here. We'll line this up. Center, I need the dot over here. Here. And the same with this one to center it. I need it to move it over. I guess I need to move them all over about a quarter of an inch or so. There. Now I've got my dots lined up. Now I had done this and I did already punch the ones in here to add my signatures. So all I did was out in the garage, I grabbed this drill bit. It's got the little tapered and I couldn't find, I know my husband's gotten all or something somewhere, 
couldn't find it. I found this and the mallet. So I'm just going to move my glass. Okay, now it's scary because I'm using a glass craft table, but I found it didn't take all that much effort to really get through this. It's just some thin cardboard and tape. In fact, I found that just even pressing this down, I can almost poke it through, but I'm just going to give it a little tap. That and a little tap. Just two taps seems to work. And then I'm going to flip it over because I've got the hole, so I'm going to do the same thing off on this side. Just give it one little tap. Don't really need to now that I've got the hole kind of through. And then I'm just going to poke this through a little bit just so I can make it a little bit bigger. But I want to poke it so I'm pushing the, the tape from the outside into the inside. I think it just looks cleaner. There. Now I've got my holes made, ready to sew my signatures on. So now I guess just figuring out how I want to finish the rest of the outside of this. I'm not quite sure yet. Like I said, I do really like the inside. I don't have to do anything. I'm not quite sure. I might finish it off with some type of a ribbon or something around here. I'm not sure how I'm going to cover the back of this. This I want to keep, but I'm going to cover up a few little things here and there. I might just end up adding like stickers or gems or something on there. And I'm going to set this aside because this is made. So now I need my signatures. Now, what I figured out measuring... But I should have done is how big do you need your signatures? Um, playing around with those ones, all I did was just took it, opened it, and put it on here, right there to right there. So it's 11 and a half is where it comes to. So any paper you fold in half. So you know, I'm thinking like, if I take my 12 by 12 scrapbook paper now and fold it in half it should fit perfectly within this. So I'm going to do that. I'm not sure where my, so I'm just gonna grab this piece that I've folded up so many times. I'm just gonna quickly fold it in half and see if I can tuck it in here and it will, no, it's gonna be a little bit too long. That's okay, so it's not that much too long. So I do need it to be five inches. So it is an inch too long, but that's okay. I just want to get the general size. And then height wise in here, let's see. Like I said, it's, I said it was about six and a half. So let's see if I do six. I'm having trouble figuring this folding this paper. My paper is folded crooked. So I'm just, so this is about six inches. Yeah. And my height, six inches. Yeah, that would be good. I mean, it's a little bit just fit in. I could do a little bit longer, a little bit taller. That would be okay. But so six by five is what I need. Just fold. This is what I was doing, making the other ones, was I just kind of had it open. And I was just folding so I get a general size of what I would need. I'm just going to fold this paper back out of my way. So I need a square of this size, which is 6 by 5. Yeah. So i got to make my signatures with paper that size. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my scrapbook paper and my other papers that I had. And I will be back uh, actually setting up, you know, making the actual signatures and um, sewing them on and figuring out what to do with the front and back of this. Okay, so I was just figuring out the sizing. I had some paper folded and then I was bending this again and this is just all coming off. You can see it's ripping the paper of this right off with the uh, 
duct tape. So I'm going to have to take this apart and think of a different way to do this. But surprisingly, it's not taking as much off as I thought it would. Just still having trouble getting this to come off. I was just testing some paper and folding it back and you know just wants to just bubble up and just wants to pull all out of here so this duct tape kind of works but I guess it's just this um, book is just so old that this paper just wants to lift off I don't want to wreck my see it just you can see right where it wants to split and just wants to pull right off I guess I'm just doing this because whoops I just don't want to rip the book I don't care about this little piece of cardboard here that I was using for the center but it's just I don't want to rip that book but you can see it just peeled all that off so the duct tape just not a oops good idea with that you can see that in here it's covered in all that extra paper so actually, I'm not even going to try to get that other piece of cardboard out of there so I'm gonna have to find something different to attach these together I thought that this duct tape would work it seemed to work on this one but it's probably because it was one solid piece so I'm gonna have to set this aside and figure out what I'm going to do but you can see how much of the back it's pulled off and the front parts like all this is now just gone right down to the cardboard so still want to use this as my thing as my front and cover front and back covers but now I got to figure out what I'm going to do for middle part um, Maybe if I made, maybe if I did make it thicker, well, I do have this one here and this one is still cut to like almost two inches. So maybe if I do it thicker, it might work a bit better. That's what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna. But I'm gonna go get some uh, different tape. I've got some other stronger clear tape so I'll go and grab that. That then means I've got to re-measure and re-punch the holes in. That's okay. Um, so I, at the same time, I will show oh, my, I'm just gonna set this aside while I figure this out. Uh, I was folding up and I have a whole bunch of things that I was gonna use for inside. Like I am one of these people, I, just, I love shiny, glittery, Things. so I collect all these like little inserts for everything Something like this I love this metallic shiny stuff and this side is just plain cardboard same with sorry I've just got all this dust because I was just playing around with pulling these things out from down in the basement same with these, these were some background stuff. This is the perf, this actually is the right size. It will fit in here, just folding it once. Fold it in half. So I've got a couple, two of these sheets like this. And I don't really wanna use a lot of this type of stuff in here, but I think it'd be fun to put in, like randomly put in a sheet of this. I don't think I would do in a small book like this, I would never want to do two or more shiny sheets, even though I love the shiny stuff. I might do other things like cut stuff out, cut little pictures out or something or little tags or something and use this. But I had a whole stack of stuff I'm ready to make my signatures. Oh, I had this too. This is the inside foil wrapper of a a goldfish cracker so I love this type of stuff but I had my stack of paper to start my to fold and to punch the holes and to start stitching my signatures 
Now I wanted to do it so I could stitch my, stitch my signatures into my book all in one step, but I will have to, so now I've got to rethink this, how to get this as a stick to here. Now I may have to end up losing uh, some of this, more of this picture than I wanted to. But now that it's taken apart, I'm gonna go and paint this. I'm gonna go to the garage, I'm gonna spray paint this a nice um, blue, green, I'm not sure what I have. I've got like a sea foam or something and a bluey green. And then same with this. I don't wanna lose the actual picture of this, but I wanna just put the two pieces kind of like, so they look like they actually go together. So this is gonna be the all solid color. Then I'm gonna put something over top of here and then I'm gonna spray just uh, like, you know, like a outline or a border around here, the same color as the back. So I could go do this while I'm trying to figure out how to attach these. And when I'm out in the garage, I can find the other tape that might work a bit better for this. So I'll be back in just a few moments. So I went through all my um, scrapbook paper and I found a whole big pile of stuff I like. And I just went and I used my little cutting tool here. I'll just buy Exacto. I don't know what this one's called. Um, I know my other one's a guillotine. This is the one where you slide the cutter across. I don't remember what it's called. So I cut my paper in half and it was just too thick. So I took, I took about half and half, so I've actually got two signatures. Uh, this will probably be too big for this book, but I thought, well, I needed like the, to be about six inches high. And then I even went and I cut uh, about an inch off of every side of the paper because it was just too wide. It was going to stick um, outside the book. But there's no point in me, you know, using one of these while filming, I had to do this slowly. I'm just gonna set this back down. Oops. Don't wanna do that way. Don't wanna cut my finger while putting it down on the floor. And then I measured, so it is six inches. So I measured to the three, that'd be halfway, and then up an inch and a half, and down an inch and a half. So I've got my marks for where I'd be you know, making my holes. I'm just going to take this again, I'm just going to take this, I'm just going to tap. I don't need to go through all of the paper to start with, I just need the basic few, and then I can slowly work my way through. I don't even know if I even got through any of this. No, it doesn't look like, oh, I got through the first two. So I get through the first two and then I can just slowly grab the next sheet and line it up. And I'm just gonna punch my holes. This is gonna take a while to punch all these holes through. I don't want to tear my paper, but I got to make the holes. So, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to punch all the holes. Uh, if you can tell by my hands, I did go and spray paint to the cover the blue. I don't know how well the front cover is going to turn out, but like I said, I've got them out in the garage waiting to be out in the garage spray painted. I'm waiting for them to dry and I figured I'd start on this. So this is going to take a while to get through all of both these stacks of papers and then I'll be back with hopefully I can get uh, figure out how to do that but if not I'm going to just stitch my signatures together. I may choose to assemble it differently. I can always stitch my signatures together and then do another stitch over top to bind it into the book. So I'm just gonna wait for the paint to dry, get the rest of these papers punched through, and then I'll be back. All right, so I've got all the holes punched in both these little booklets. Um, found my darning needle. I couldn't find my baker's twine that's got the colored in it, but I've got just this regular kitchen stuff that we always seem to have a ball of it always in the kitchen. So I'm going to use 
this for tonight. Even with the needle, the hole this big, I'm still having trouble <laughs> threading. Okay. So now if I remember how to do this key. So I was watching and they were saying go up and down, up and down. And then I realized if I just ignore what they said and I just imagine I'm doing a figure eight. I guess that's kind of the pattern. But you go through the center from the inside. Oh, I'm not going to tie this. I don't know how long I'm going to need. I've never done this before. So I'm leaving this just still attached to the ball. So you go down through the center. And then you're going to come up. To the top one, get this through here, and coming into the book, and then down through the center, I've got more string than I'm going to need, but like I said, I didn't know how much I'm going to need to do this, make sure you pull it tight. And then this time you go back up through, but you want to go through the bottom. The darning needle is a little bit bigger than the hole I made. And then I'm going to go back. <clears throat> I'm going to lose my voice doing this. Go back down through the center. I don't know how many times you need to do this. Okay, so now I've got... Now I'm going to go... And this I'm going to go up through the top one and pull tight. And I'm going to skip the middle one. And I'm going to go down through the bottom and pull through. Oops, I'm going to get caught on everything. Pull through. And now I'm going to go up through the middle once more. If I can get this to go through, I think my twine I'm using, it might be a little bit too thick, but this is what I have tonight. That's why I'm not going to do the second one. I'm just doing this first one just to practice to make sure I got my signature made correctly. Oops. Except when you get little things stuck on your desk and stuck through the string, it's not very good. Like that. Okay, so now I'm just going to snip this and tie it off. I've got so much string on both sides. I'm just going to give myself a good amount of string. I give it a good double knot here. And one pull tight. And a second one pull tight. Like that. Oops. Loose paper. I've got my signature made. I'm going to trim off this excess stuff. Now, I'm looking at the way this knot is, and I don't know. I don't trust myself when I stitch that things are going to stay. But I've got it stitched. I'm going to fold this back. Like that. Like I said, now the thing is, is all my scrapbook paper, I didn't do any other papers in here. I'm just making this with the scrapbook paper and I just grabbed a stack full scrapbook. I don't even know how many pieces. Let's see. Five, six, seven, ten pieces, I guess. I guess it's about nine or eleven. I don't know. So I'll say about ten pieces of scrapbook paper. And my scrapbook paper is all single-sided, so it means I've got pattern on one side and then a lot of blank pages, which is fine because I like to do a lot of various things. So now I've got this made, and I know my stuff what didn't cut very straight. I don't know my thing. It's, my blade wasn't working, and I was having to go up and down several times, and doing that, my paper was jiggling. I don't, I don't do a lot of paper crafts, cutting paper. Um, so my pages are kind of crooked. That's okay. I have ideas because I don't want them all to be like a straight edge. I want to do some fancy cutting with some of my other scissors. Um, so I've got this made and I will check it. So I've got this book here. 
and I just took the little pages out because it wants to fall out and I'm just gonna see how it fits in here and it fits I mean like I said I'm not worried it hangs over just a little bit on some parts of it I'm not worried because I do want to tr I will be trimming each page down separately once I start doing things with it so now I've got this made so now I'm gonna have to attach this to my book now the thing is is the book I made I still don't know how I'm supposed to get the um, my front covers attached I'm still thinking about that that's why I didn't stitch this one together because this one here will actually fits in it better As I will show you if I do this I thought I had it lined up, but I didn't quite have it lined up. So I actually have some of my pages are a little bit longer, some are a little shorter. So when I made my two books, I just took uh, the tall ones off. And that's the ones I stitched, so I can save this one to stitch into my book as soon as I've got that all put together. So I'm going to go grab that from the garage. It should be dried now. I'm hoping that it doesn't get stuck to anything. And then I will get some more cardboard and I'll get the other tape and reassemble it. Okay, so I got, this is the front cover here. A little bit of the spray paint went seeped under, but that was okay, not a lot. It's not bad, I mean, you can still see, and it's got these blue splotches, so it kind of adds, or kind of blends in. And this is the back cover. There's a few spots here where I could go and do a second coat, but I'm not going to because I know I'm going to be putting stuff on here anyways. I just wanted to get rid of some of the, the writing. I was going to try to keep it, but after that first piece of tape tore all that off, I thought, no, I might as well just, you know, just cover it all. So I did cut another strip of this um, cardboard here. And I cut it to two inches wide. I don't remember what I cut it last time, if it was one and a half, but this time I was stuck with a full two inches. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna line this up. So I've got a cutting board on top of a different cutting board and it's slanting. So I'm pull this off. Hi, Eleanor baby. This puppy is laying by my feet. Okay, set those aside. There's something still under here, something under this cutting board. Yeah. And everything just gets layered on top of everything and you're trying to make a level surface and it's not working. Um, I was going to use this tape, but I think it's kind of lost its stickiness. I can tell when I was peeling off the tape. So I've got uh, this dark blue or I have this other uh, teal, like a darker teal. So I'm going to use this one. Baby, what are you, what are you doing? So she is stuck under my feet. She can't move. Stuff fell and she will not move. So I guess she's going to just be there for a while. Okay, so I want this to see. I'm going to do this a different way. I'm going to lay this down, although this isn't going to work because this is exactly the same width as my piece of um, cardboard. So I'm going to trim this in half. So maybe just one inch. And that will give me an inch and then half an inch, half an inch and half an inch. Okay, I will trim this down in half. I'm going to have to clean my craft room again. Like I said, I'm using my uh, different cutting boards and mats and stuff as a ruler. I'm going to have to find my rulers. But this works good. Like these both, like both of these have all these lines and I can make sure I'm all lined up evenly. So this is really good anyways. Take whichever piece is straighter. So let's put it in the lines. That's pretty straight. They're both pretty straight. Although this one's this one here is straighter. This one's got a funny little 
um, nick out of it. So I will do this. I'm going to put the white side out and the more cardboard brown side in. Now that should give me more room. Okay. I'll grab the tape again. I'll actually lay this down. Sure if you're doing this, but it's okay. And right there. I'm just gonna grab my exacto knife because I have to trim this cardboard off. I forgot to do that. And I stuck it on there really good. And I forgot to trim it down the other way. This tape is really sticky and you can't even get the cardboard to get off. Okay. There. There. So I'll flip this around. So I see how much tape I need. Yep, that's gonna work. I'm gonna grab my scissors, just do a little snip. Yeah, this is very sticky. My scissors are sticking to it. This is the newer duct tape. Okay. Let's pull this up. Rings just want to slide off tonight. I don't know why. Give it a bend. And give this a bend. And yep, yeah, it did the same thing. It wants to bubble off, anyways. So I'm just going to reinforce it. I didn't want to lose a lot of this cover. I think I may have to. I'm just going to put it here. I didn't want to lose any of the wording, but I will lose the H, or not the H, the T, and the word the. That's okay. I just I was trying to avoid losing it was mostly the picture I wanted anyways, so that's okay. That's better. I won't lose. You know, it's not going to come off. And I'll do the same to this side. Trying to keep this as straight as possible. It doesn't want to go straight, it wants to turn on me. I'm scared to lift this up because I don't want to peel off all that spray paint because that has happened before on things I've done. I need it to be there. And this there. This. And pull it straight. Oops. Got a 
little thing where it bent in on itself, but again, that happened to the one I made yesterday, and it's, you know, I'm trying to do this as straight as possible, and duct tape is very sticky this is like I said this is a new roll of duct tape so I can be, yeah I just want to make sure that my duct tape is gonna cover the other I'm not perfect on this. I mean, it's like if you have a book and you repair a book with tape, you know, it's never going to be perfect. And the fact that this is supposed to be like a junk journal already says it doesn't have to be perfect. I do like a little bit of flaws. Like I didn't per I didn't line my boards perfectly together, which is why I've got this weird overhang. I've got the Let's see if I just pull this mat up here do this. If I put this one on, you can see the unevenness of my front and back cover. And I kind of did that on purpose. I wanted them to be just a little bit off-centered. That way, if I messed up anywhere, it's not going to be as noticeable. I do want to try to fill that up a little bit. That's not going to work. Okay, so now got my signature made but now I've got to punch the holes in this so I've got to get my measuring tape here and I've got to clean my craft room tomorrow that is what I will be doing tomorrow okay so it's uh, about six and a half So I need the holes at three and a quarter. And then, like I said, I don't know where the half is out of the three and a quarter. So I'm just going to do what I did before. Just fold it in on itself and pinch it. And I get to there. It's one and a half, but then a little tick mark between the half and three quarters. I don't know what that is called. And then I'm just going to find my halfway point here. That's the halfway point would be exactly half an inch. So half an inch. Half an inch. And half an inch. So I've got my three holes made. And I've got like six holes only because I need my first ones. I didn't quite have them lined up exactly where they were because it was this extra bump of tape here. I had my tape measured just a little bit too far one way. Now I've got to find, oops, put this on here. I've got to find that little tool I was using. Here it is. I'm just going to do, I know I'm shaking my camera and my table. And my daughter came in and she's like, you're actually using the mallet on a glass table? And I said, yeah. But not just that is on a glass table. I've got my gl good glass cutting board here as well. So I guess I just really want to break something tonight. I don't know. Okay. And then for this, I'm going to start um, with my string on the outside so I can tie my knot to the outside, not on the inside. Uh, I don't know if that's going to make any difference, but now i got to decide which I want, top or bottom. Most of these pages don't matter. It's just this first page here. I want it up here. 
I know this is going to bug me, this little piece of paper popping off of there. Um, actually, I think I like it with the bluebird up at the top. Too bad that's going to be my last page, not my first page. My first page kind of has the bluebird, but it was all, it got trimmed off. So, okay, line this up, line this up, grab my, I think I have enough string on here. I hope so. So, so I'm going to come up from the middle one. I'm just going to get through the book cover first. So, there, just got to, oops. I should do that before I do anything else. Just get this darning needle through the book cover and the dark. There. The darning needle is a little bit fatter than the hole I had punched. There. Now it should go through. Each time I go through, it's going to be a little easier. Is it having trouble with the training? <laughs> Darning needle. Okay, so I'm gonna come up from the middle, from the outside to the inside. I'm gonna go to the middle first. Oops, gotta get through all these pages, not just half of them. So I decided for this being my first actual journal complete. Um, I've decided just to stick with the scrapbook pages tonight. Just easier to cut down. I think it'd just be easier to. Oops. I gotta figure out which was the top and which was the bottom. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Okay. Let's make sure I've got my string still through there. I'm up and I'm going to go through the top first. I'm trying to get this back through all this pages. I do have a smaller darning needle, but this was the largest one I could find tonight. Okay, I'm through all through there and I'm going to go back up through the middle. Pliers might help for some of this because I have trouble pulling on things. And now we're going to go down and through the bottom hole. Why is it not going through? Why is it not going through? There we go. And we'll go gently yes. through the center again. Just trying to remember the pattern. It's just Oops, what did I do? I knotted it already. One string still loose. I just got this all tangled and knotted. Okay, so that was through the bottom to the center. Now I'm going to go up to the top. And I'm going to go through the bottom use my table to help push the needle through I'm 
Now I'm going to go through the center. supposed to go. I made a new hole. Not where it was supposed to go. Go through. that tight. Now I'm just going to do my knot here. And trim it off. And there we go. I've got my first junk journal with the signature attached. I know I see this it wants to open wide because of the way it's made. But I'm just going to now I gotta figure out what I'm going to do for some type of a enclosure to keep it closed. Now I know as these pages fill it's gonna want to do that. I know I don't quite have it all lined up even. I know some of my pages are crooked. My stitching didn't quite, you know, my string I'm using is just a little too thick for this. But again, this would be my first junk journal complete with signature. Now I get to go and do all the fun stuff of adding to all, all inside. So I'm just going to, I'm just worried it's going to fall apart on me. <laughs> okay. But like I said, now I'm going to get my fancy cut scissors and I'm going to cut all these pages all around here. And I can add things to this and I can't wait to start actually doing stuff with this. So, there we go. Uh, again, just want to say thank you to everybody who's subscribing to my channel and watching my videos. And this was fun to make. I've learned so much in the process. Um, I'm missing supplies. I know what I need to get if I really want to get into making junk journals. Uh, it's fun to do. Uh, easy to, easy, will be, it will be easier to do when I get the right tools. Uh, if I get the right size darning needle, a little bit smaller needle, thinner thread. Um, figuring out better ways to do to make the journals themselves. Um, but it's Fun. I've got some other ideas I'd like to try um, but yeah I can't wait to you know start embellishing this that's what I want to do right now but looking at the clock I gotta go pick up my son and my husband from work so this was a really fun day um, making this one from start to finish uh, I guess to say uh, bye and I'll see you all in my next videos